Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash NOTLP. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash NOTLP. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash NOTLP. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we warn you. Hey everybody! Ooh, welcome to Night of the Living podcast. This was staff picks, and our mailing list winner, mm-hmm. honorary staff for this week, honorary mm-hmm. staff Lauren picked the first season of Fleabag, Fleabag Amazon Prime, Fleabag dramedy, Fleabag. So we'll be getting to that later. Um, prior to that, Kelly will be reviewing D hyphen railed i got railed with some d <laughs> <laughs> starring lance henriksen yeah starring uh lance henriksen's ghost <laughs> uh he's still alive but it was his ghost they had i'm sure of it yeah. you was it just a, through you could see through him was it just yeah. a cutout it, well it moved around and talked maybe a hologram it was like the three men and a baby Oh yeah, yeah. He's just yeah. behind the curtain. It's Spe- like, oh, he killed himself on set. Speaking of ghosts, and I know this has happened so many times on the show. I really, I feel like I'm living in a Mandela effect where I think all these celebrities are dead. Yeah, and then you look it up, and they're not at all. But I remember them dying. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I remember posts about it, like Kirk yeah. Douglas. You're like, like, I remember the life oh, yeah. leaving their eyes when when Kirk Douglas died the other day. Uh, I was like, I thought he died two years ago. I yeah. was like, I remember, I remember people <laughs> posting about it. And uh, no, he didn't. Yes, yesterday, we were listening to, I put on the Captain and Tennille, and I was like, oh, she died a couple years ago. And I was like, but maybe she didn't, because every time, <laughs> maybe I just saved her life by saying that she had. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just rearranging. You reanimated had her. she died? Did no, you check? She's alive. Oh, the captain okay. died, I know. I think right, one right? of the cap wasn't there more than one captain? There's more than one captain. The oh. one died years and years and years ago when yeah. we were still kids. And then uh the maybe it was the new captain that died. Well there was first there was Commander Pike and Tennille. Yes. Then there was Kirk and Tennille. Then Kirk and Tennille. And there's Captain Crunch and yeah. Tennille. There was that. And then there was Captain Kangaroo Captain and Tennille. Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> we lost Captain Spaulding and Tennille last yeah. year, RIP. Uh, that's Kelly. I'm Freddie. Amy's here. Fuck yeah, I am. Andy's here. <laughs> Heck yeah, I am. Oh, oh Andy doesn't shade. have to work blue. I don't, yeah, that's some bad language. Shade at all. Mikey B still on his break. Uh, we, uh, Patreon.com slash NOTLP. We just had our meetup. Our Discord February. meetup. If you're a patron, and by the way, welcome to the fold, Todd, as a Beelzebub. What up, yeah, Tad? welcome, Todd. Uh, welcome. We got together. We watched the original My Bloody Valentine together. I, that was my first viewing. Yeah. Andy's too. Yeah, and you, I loved it. I love a slasher. It is just Don't a you? dumb, goofy movie. Fun, fun, fun. It's got fun, some of the fun, best fun, kills. Fun, 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 fun. Really good kills. And they restored it. So the latest version that you can get that's on Blu-ray uh, is it has all those those kills that almost got it an X rating. Yeah. Really? Are re- restored. I mean, it seems t- by today's standards. We've got some real not so much. Babies. Minor, minor babies chicken back diner. Yeah. Had you ever seen it, Kelly? No. Uh we should uh I'd watch it again with you just so you could see it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it. I might. It's spooky. <laughs> Yeah, I it's like Canadian. Spooky. I like Canadian spook. It's this whole town is like Valentine themed town. Oh my god! But of course, you, you know they also haven't celebrated Valentine's Day because of this, you know, oh. tragedy. It's like Jaws with Valentine's. It is it's like, like Footloose Jaws. with murder. We yeah. gotta, we gotta have this Valentine celebration, or yeah. this town's gonna lose all the money it ever had. It has the remote feeling of like the thing though, where the town is so podunk. Yeah. That like you feel like you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. I like that. It's nice. It's a nice movie. I, when I was a kid, I was terrified of it. Yeah, and uh, it's still kind of spooky. It's a good movie. No, I'm into that. Um, so, but we had a blast hanging out. This is my. I say it every time, but it's my favorite thing that we do f- with the patrons. 
Um, and Jeremy, right we after baths, we haven't forgotten your shirt. So remember on last show, we were like, got the shirt ready to go. It's going to get mailed tomorrow. Well, I, I haven't forgotten your shirt, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, it's sitting by the door on the top door. of our, we have a little in and out box. It's ready to go. It is it's staring a, at us. I feel we're going to see him in a, in a month anyway. I'm so bringing it to the just, Let's just wait. Yeah. I don't know, Jeremy, you tell us. Uh, and Todd will get yours out since yours, you're Todd, still in the fresh, you're right in the hopper. Yeah. Todd, don't get too excited. Shirt and yeah. pen. I'm bad. I'm bad at this. But no, I'll make sure they do I just it. want to see how long we can keep this going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We said it was like the Lindsey Buckingham thing from What's Up With That on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> oh, Lindsey Buckingham. <laughs> we still didn't. We didn't make time for Lindsey tonight. <laughs> oh, come on, Jeremy. Give us a smile. Don't come on, mad. Jeremy. Come on. <laughs> like, let's be real. There's a real possibility that even though Horror Hound is in my town and all I do is just leave my home and go to it and come back, I'll still forget to bring it with me. I hope that to see Jeremy. Happen. I'll be very ashamed of you. You shut up. You live here, too. <laughs> well. You could have taken it at I, any point. I think I've done my share of work to getting that shirt ready for Jeremy. I think I've done my I've done share everything short of dropping it off at the post office. Yeah. Um, That's so. the big one. <laughs> Is, is it in a one. box? It's, it's in, in a, a bag. bag. Is Freddy. it do I does it have to be put in a box? No. no. It's ready to go. It's it's addressed. Addressed. The post office. The yeah. post office is hey. literally three <laughs> minutes away. Just give it to yeah. me. I'll do take it. Do you know how today. hard that is? No, They're closed. It. It's Sunday. No, I'll wait, no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it because the kiosk is open. Do you guys hear this? Oh, okay. I'll Andy is going to take it. I'll kiosk it. Yeah. Right. So patrons, okay. yes. patreon.com slash NOTLP, please sign up. Uh, <laughs> if you can and it, want to. It makes a big difference. We did our taxes yesterday and I'm proud to say. He's proud. That we, Freddie Morrison, I'm here erect. to say. <laughs> I, uh, it's full disclosure. That's the show sand. in the year 2019 only took a loss of $28. I know. It's yeah, hard to believe. Millie, Millie. Yeah. But we almost broke even this year. It's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and that was super exciting for me as a person who likes to make sure that everything <laughs> that we bring in goes right back into the show. We have done mostly that. Yeah. <laughs> So, we need, we need well, maybe next year we don't drink out of uh, <laughs> diamond crusted <laughs> crumb goblets. Maybe we'll, you know. Kelly, I worked blo- so hard on this. The Klingon blood yeah. wine that we bought. <laughs> we just need to claim more. It's our yeah. replicator that gives us Rocky yeah. Gino. Do we have dependence? Are the dogs yeah. dependents on, on, these? The, yeah. <laughs> on the podcast? <laughs> It's that milk bone money. Yeah. We have a lot of figures, little action figures in here that could be deducted. Where's, our, right. <laughs> yeah. Where's our tax breaks, Trump? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, all, it's all those. We're a small business. It's all those big podcasts are getting the tax breaks. Yeah. Yeah. We're the smallest of business. We're, we're the mom and pop uh, podcast right now. But it's because of you patrons that we remain ad free, which <laughs> is very important to me. I don't know about you guys, but I love that you don't have to hear about toothbrushes. Or but I will tell you, my new Rothy shoes. <laughs> what does that mean? That's a joke. That's another. That's a, the shoes, the Rothy shoes that are made out of the water bottles. You don't hear that on every podcast you listen to. <laughs> Oh, no, I haven't heard that one yet. My Brooklyn and Cheats? Anybody, yeah. nobody? Yeah, but uh, we just also did a Night of the Comic. Yes. Which was about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Disney World and the comic, Black Spire Outpost comic that Marvel does. We uh, Freddie had me on as a guest, and we regaled Dave, Scarecrow Oven, with um, a, a complete description of the land. So and you, d- you just made him jealous for an hour? Yeah. We tortured him. He's, he's, he's working on, he has a young son. And he's working on making it happen where they can go and do the experience once the hotel opens. Mm. So we would love to do that too. Yeah, so. yeah Dave, let us know so we can crash that party mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. He said he was down with coordinating and we could all meet Fuck up. Yeah, motherfucker. Maybe we can finally get Kelly down there. <laughs> you would pee Kelly's your pants. never gonna go. I'll I start saving to, now. <laughs> I was explaining to Kelly at work the other day how cool it is. I do love Star Wars stuff. Yeah. So fucking cool. I would love to experience Star Wars. Today. If you want. Yeah. Even hear. if you just go for that. Yeah. Well, if, I probably but once you get a little taste, <laughs> once you get a little bit of pirates in you, a little pirates, you're going to be hooked. You know, uh, I won't say never. Yeah. I won't say never. I uh, never say never. Yeah. Like that bird from. Uh, yeah, like from American Tale. American Tale. I'll <laughs> yeah. never say never again. Henri. Henri. That's right. In the middle of the night, I stepped out of our room and I sang uh, somewhere out there thinking about you. <laughs> yeah. I looked up at the moon and I was like, I could sing right now. Kelly, did you do the I same? I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all look at the same moon. Aww. I thought we were. <laughs> so patrons at Night of the Comic is available to you yep. right now. Origins will be a little late. Um, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> because I trust people to read their calendars. <laughs> oh my God. We're, on, we're, we're still on vacation. I mode. blame vacation. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not blaming anyone, Andy. 
I need to Kelly tell. Kelly didn't do his last week either. Yeah. So I was just yeah. point fingers. Later. It's going to be the new thing where you guys <laughs> just send it in what, later. Was I supposed to do one last week? No, you're no, you're, you're late. You, Two it, weeks ago. Yeah, oh, my you, God. You, you literally phoned it in for Andy's, me. Andy's Andy's oh, doing the what about. Yeah. 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 yeah, which is fine. I did that once. What yeah, about so is yeah, a, yeah. isn't cool? No, but, as long as somebody else says it, then it makes it okay. All right. So yeah, it's all cool. It's all right, babies. It'll, to, it'll get there. It'll be out soon. It's all about deflection. Uh huh. Really? But just so you understand, I have been checking the calendar to look for mine when it's I love that. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Get the gold stars out. Andy gets no gold stars, but okay. Kelly gets one for checking. So we were on vacation. I could buy my own gold stars, goddammit. <laughs> I'll go to Gold Star Chili. In, oh. in Disney World recently, obviously. And I need to tell the best story of the trip. Please do. Very important story. Very relatable story. So we're in the airport on the way back home. <laughs> forgot about this. And thank you. Andy has us. Uh, this important uh, story. You forgot all about <laughs> breaking. News. Well, I, I told Amy, I was like, we need to make sure we tell the Andy shell game story. No, this is Andy has a love for it. Sabaro that is deep and abiding mm -hmm. and borderline obsessive. It's weird. <laughs> it's good right. Stuff, I it's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's and it's hard good. to find. But the Air Orlando airport has a Sabaro. And we always stop there. So we stop to get pizza. Freddie goes up to buy me a slice and himself some slices. Yeah. Comes back with three cheese pizzas. That is not what he ordered. He mm. ordered pepperoni. That's right. And Amy really needs pepperoni in her life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bring Amy a slice of cheese pizza. I'll eat cheese pizza. But you're always like pepperoni or no. Yeah, nothing. she gets violent. So, nothing more? Nothing less. Nothing less. Pepperoni. So he brings it back. And I'm sitting at the table with Andy. Mike, we're just chilling out, and the guy and Andy's sitting there going, "Oh, please, 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 let him, let him, let them, let them keep him, keep the, let him keep the pizzas for free, let him keep them." <laughs> <laughs> you were praying. It was cute. Like your eyes were closed. Did you, you were looking up. Yeah. Well, I started to hand over. The guy's like, "I can't take those back," and I was like, "Okay, just then give me what I paid for, and, and I will fun. give these away." So Freddie brings back the three slices of cheese. And Andy, just the glow in his eyes. My intention was oh, to give all three of these slices to Andy. So he's like almost crying. The that is the thrust of this story. Like you were like, okay. for you. thank you. You're looking up to the heavens going, thank you. Well, we, we and just had like the, your glowing eyes. We just left Disney World on the best vacation ever. I know. Yeah. And it was the last bit of magic that mm -hmm. we had. Yeah. And it was like, I stopped believing in God like last <laughs> month. <laughs> but Just last month. Got yeah. them back, reeled them back in. Good but for you. this makes me kind of like, hey, there's something out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that looking this out could for reaffirm <laughs> some sort of faith that you have. Beneath the pale bloom. I mean, that was exactly. it. I just couldn't explain to you the joy yeah. and, 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 and just glow about him when this happened. Well, I want to tell you as a pizza lover, Andy. Yeah. And as someone who has specific loves like that, I understand. Exactly. I would have the same feeling. I'd be like, oh, shit, you won't give me all down. <laughs> well, the problem is Andy's... Um, sense of generosity kicked in for a millisecond he's like i'm not gonna eat I'm, i can't take all of these i'm gonna take <laughs> but he said, he said i'm not gonna take all of them waiting for all of us to go no of course you could have all three of them <laughs> i was like i don't need them i have my 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 dinner but i was like fuck it i want a half of one yeah so amy amy ate half of one and then so andy said i'm just gonna take one slice but then <laughs> This whole shell game started where Mike was going to take a slice, but then Andy was like, I'll hold on to it for you. He's like, I'll just keep that for you. And then, <laughs> and then he was like, and then he tried to gaslight everyone into thinking that he didn't have two slices. Uh, it was, that's awesome. You, yeah, were try, you were trying. It was pretty to great. It, right, Andy? It, it was a long, long drift. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> It's that, that, that glimmer of generosity. I was like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you just need to keep your mouth shut. All three of those were for you. And then Amy ate half of one. Oh, I was stealing one for Scherzies. And then you had to you had to be nice and then make it weird because you're like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the first thing. I could have easily went up and gotten me an extra slice. But you like, could have. You immediately it wasn't regretted. Free. <laughs> yeah. There was something special about free pizza. There is. Well, Mike went up to the bathroom. I was like, how do I convince Mike he doesn't want this pizza? <laughs> But alas, so someone stole it. Yeah. Alas, alas. So uh, stop grumbling. Did you bitch. eat any of the pizza on the plane? Your extra slices, your to-go yeah, I had to cradle them because you yeah. made me scared that they would make me get rid of it. <laughs> they don't 
can't make you get rid of food no, when you're running I, security. I, I had my carry on. Yeah. And then I had my bag of Sabaro. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we were there was a personal item discussion about if the pizza counted as a personal item. Oh. They were like, no, that's only personal pans. <laughs> <laughs> I told this that. story about when I was coming home from Boston and the guy comes on with a big old box of legal seafood like <laughs> leftovers and I'm like get your fucking fish off this plane. Yeah. We took uh, we took like two dozen tamales on a plane once. Yeah, yeah. Did they have not to eat seat? on the plane? Yeah, right. Two dozen. Two dozen. Maybe one dozen. Yeah, but it was a lot. I Where did you put dozen. them in your lap? Uh, in our in our in your belly luggage. That oh, we I see. It was in your. You checked it. Oh, uh, no, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't think we did. I think we've only checked luggage once, but yeah. we, yeah, you know, we got the cases in there. I'm yeah. With you. I also took potato rolls on, on a, what on is a potato roll? <laughs> it's uh it's bread that is uh, it's like a dinner roll. Oh, they're, like potato bread. Yeah. They're delicious and rich. I gotcha. When you said potato rolls, I couldn't wrap my head around. I thought it was a, like a potato roll up. Yeah. It's a potato roll up. <laughs> they flatten out potatoes. Yeah. And then they put them in cute packaging. Kids eat them. <laughs> Potato by the foot. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, take them off Juicy the cell potato. <laughs> Gum. Take I a sniff. Pull it out. It's completely okay to Big bring food potato. on a plane. Like th- they charge you to breathe on the plane now. Mm-hmm. Bring your food on the plane. Just not like fish or whatever. Yeah. Or like don't bring something super stinky. Yeah. Or like a I don't know. Like Amy's gonna email octopus. you guys her list of unacceptable foods. Right, and sure. it's mostly just fish. So. Millie is grumbling. grumbling. Jesus Lord. Millie, Millie, Millie. So I uh, I splurged on this trip and got the Nautilus tiki bowl. I was yeah. Did you see it? No, but you told me I think a while ago about about them having this. Yeah, I'm gonna go get it. Yeah, you guys uh, discuss. Yeah. Really? Right now? Mm-hmm. He's gonna show it to the listeners. So Freddie got it in honor of Kirk Douglas, who passed yeah. away, and mm-hmm. he was in Twenty Thousand Leagues Under right. the Sea. He was. And he got a drink that serves for for himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, they're not supposed to give it to one person, but I've heard tales mm-hmm. of one person ordering he, he, that. He, did, he done good. I mean, I had a few yeah. sips of that. We're talking about Trader Sam's, of course. That's beautiful. In Disney World. So this honking piece of fucking tiki mug nearly put me over on my luggage weight. It, yeah, it was tricky, it, but it did put you over, actually. It did. Yeah. The, the point is, he got Trader it Sam's, yeah. great time tiki bar. Yeah. That is... Mostly themed around 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, plus Tiki. And this is the, something we always thought was out of reach because it was like a $50 mug. Yeah, And we're, n- we're not rich. It's not like a $50 mug. It's almost a $60 mug, right? No, it's 50 oh, okay. With the drink included. Oh. So but it's, it's only a $40 damn, mug. Damn, it's a deal. <laughs> it is a lot of booze. You can see how much that holds, right? It's a beautiful piece. It's a beautiful piece. And I, like, I love how Kelly is examining it. Mm-hmm. Like he, he's an and, antique. Uh, I'm looking at all the details. Series. It's yeah. going to be on the Antique Roadshow eventually. Yeah. But, and you can hear it moving right now probably in the background. Uh, it's about to scuttle a ship. It's meant for two or more people when it comes with all these long straws in it. And it's just full of booze. But then it's also the Nautilus. It is. It's amazing. And I love 20. And you, Kelly, feel the same way. I know we're big. 20,000 leagues people mm-hmm. it's great it's good shit it is good shit it's a really nicely made uh really nicely designed uh i uh piece of crockery there yeah and because kirk douglas died that yeah, same we already day said all this. they gave it to you for free yeah i wish that was the case that'd be nice they're but, like uh, half off kirk's death day yeah so i was like it's a sign it's an oprah god moment as you guys mm-hmm. say yep and i was like i have to get it on this trip and also, ironically, this is the same year I'm getting my tattoo, my Nautilus tattoo, yeah. which I just put a deposit on. Nice. At Horror Hound? Yes, Hi, at Horror Hound. Because uh, my favorite tattoo artist, Brandy Smart, will be there, who did the other two big pieces that I have. And now I'm getting a third by her. I'm super excited. I'm super excited for you. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. You going to join me one of these days? I don't know. Maybe. Let's get. Let's turn into the illustrated man. Yeah. Let's be the illustrated <laughs> man. I'll just get yeah. the illustrated man. Oh, we should get little illustrated man tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> That's so meta. Yeah. That'd be cool. It would be cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if anybody's listening. Um, Nobody's listening. Yeah. I need to go back to the Polynesian. So if anybody is looking for a. I'm looking for a sugar daddy or mama. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's no joke. I would do some bad things. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> to for money to go back to he the would, Polynesian. He would commit tax fraud for you. Well, the good news is we, Amy and I were talking, and this is inside baseball. Why are, no, <laughs> no one needs why to know are you this. Talking. But there, there's a great way that you can save when you rent DVC points. Just yeah. out of, if somebody out there is also oh. a Disney World person, like you can stay at the nicer places for what you pay for the moderate ones if you rent 
DVC points, and that's probably not a secret that a lot of people should know. So keep it under your hat. Keep it under your hat. But we didn't pay what, you know, we didn't pay rack rate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we had enough left over for the Nautilus. It was, I, like, it was like Little Caesars. We got yeah. two uh, for the price of one. That's right. I ain't no rack rate, bitch. Hot and ready. <laughs> no. <laughs> but seriously, if anybody wants whole picks, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Of what holes? Yeah. <laughs> It's just whole picks, like oh. <laughs> not not partial picks, just yeah. the whole pick. The reason we had such a nice trip was because Amy and Andy both turned forty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nope. bite your tongue. I turned fifty. Yeah, Andy had them put. <laughs> yeah, they give you a happy birthday pen, so everybody that works there knows it's your birthday. And they said which one, and he said fifty. <laughs> and he wanted to get the compliments. And on how young he looked. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my god, I can't believe you're fifty. It's yeah. like me neither. Did did you did you really walk around with that on? He yeah. did oh, every day. Right. Yeah, every moment. Did you get a bunch of compliments? I was catfishing people left and oh, right. Oh, every time somebody said fifty, I went, "He's lying. It's a joke." Because <laughs> yeah. I'm no fun. There was only one person who didn't believe you was fifty, though. Oh, they were like, "You're 50? and the rest of them were like, <laughs> "Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, Happy birthday, sir." I learned the expression Asian don't raisin, and I had never heard that before. I feel and like I that's a stretch. That. That's oh. a stretch one. But I've heard it <laughs> to since. make that. No, not that the sentiment doesn't work. It just the rhyme is a stretch. Yeah. Well, I mean, not many things rhyme with Asian, Kelly. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> abrasions. <laughs> Asians don't get abrasions. <laughs> We're mean. <laughs> White is not tight. Uh, <laughs> that one works. But Asian, no raisin. I'm a me. <laughs> uh, anything else for the top? I'm 40 and fabulous. Yeah. Hope, you, hope everybody yeah. had a happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. I had a good one. Lots of good stuff happened. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy that half off candy, guys. Oh, that's right. Today's the day. Today is the day. I need a little bit of candy in my life. Just a little bit. Oh, not a lot. Gonna get your candy on. Do they still make those chalky uh, tarts? What, the messages on them? Yeah. yeah. But then you get the sweet tart ones. They're no, so I like better. the chalky Ugh, ones. The Necco wafers? Yeah. Gross. You're hey. gross. All right. Well, we'll be back. Ugh. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. <laughs> that must be solved for by the conclusion of this evening someone will die Ah! he's dead no he's not i'm afraid he is i think this is real indeed it is ladies and gentlemen this is a robbery Whatever it is, it's still out there. How long are we going to run from this thing? As long as we can. There's got to be some way to stop it. What if this is just the way it ends? I thought the trailer looked fun, Kelly. Oh, yeah. That trailer spoiled the shit out of it. I wasn't going to spoil the shit out of it because I kind of like this. Oh, what? Uh, It's not a good movie. Right. um, But I did enjoy it when I looked at it from a certain perspective. Um, but Sideways. That, I was, yeah, I had to sort of lay down. From my point of view, it's eyes. the Jedi that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
I did have that moment. Was this movie just mostly like some jazz and then screaming? Oh my that's God. That's what I got. So yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, actually there was no jazz, oh. but um, it was jazzy kind of. It was Jay-Z. Mm. Uh, but that trailer just gave shit away when the guy's like, this is a robbery. I wasn't going to tell people that that happened. Mm. Oh no. I did not watch the trailer, so I was completely surprised. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to only kind of spoil this. I'm only going to spoil this movie as much as the trailer did. Okay. Um, because I did, I actually found myself really enjoying it, uh, mostly, um, again, it's not a good movie. This is not a good movie. And there are a couple of super, like the twists are so dumb. They're not even, it's, you're just gonna be like, Oh, this again. Uh -huh. But, um, when it started, I thought I was going to hate it. I thought I was going to despise it. I was saying to myself, I fucking hate this already. Because there are these two, it starts off with these three annoying teenagers, um, and it's like Halloween, and they're, there's, they're at this train depot. Also, some things don't make a lot of sense uh, once you get to the end, and you're like, hold on a second. Um, but anyway, these three teenagers go to this thing, and they're boarding this murder mystery train that's going to depart this train depot and i'm thinking that these annoying annoying teenagers are going to be the main characters and thankfully they're not oh good i'll spoil that for you just so you can like not have that same dread and <laughs> discomfort of worrying that you're going to be spending the next you know a little bit with these people they are not in the rest of the movie thank goodness so actually so uh you you have all these passengers board what is basically a murder mystery show on a train this part was actually kind of awesome um the writing I, I kept thinking like god the acting is I, I don't know what it is and then i realized something watch it like a stage play the acting is really good if you look at it from that perspective the actors are not bad i feel like they farmed a bunch of like stage people like local stage people maybe yeah um because the acting and the writing it's all very stagey and part of that might even be because it's a murder, murder mystery, mystery thing yeah. but it works and actually like the the acting there are moments where you're going to think it feels off and I think some of that too is the sound design because I, I, a very flat sound design can make actors lines sound badly delivered when they're not really. Yeah. Um, so I was catching moments of that where at first I was like, Oh, she was off. And then I was like, Oh, I think it was just the way like the, the sound editing was. So don't judge it based on that. Um, everybody did a good job. So you get all these characters <clears throat> assembled in this train. This, this to me feels a lot like a dusk till dawn movie where you have basically half of one movie. And then the second half is a r ridiculous horror movie. Yeah. Um, and so they set up this murder mystery, which then, as the trailer tells you, turns out one of the people is actually two, two of them are trying to rob this train. Um, and that I really just wanted to watch the murder mystery unfold like that would have been just fine. Yeah, um, it was actually very engaging. So um, you're saying watch the first half of this movie and then rent knives out. Well, <laughs> you could do that. Even the second half where it gets goofy. Mm hmm. It, it's never this movie is never boring um again i don't want you to think it's good but it has good things and yeah. it is never ever boring it has the elements that i like yeah yeah trains <laughs> no and those are it's good like and that's it <laughs> i love trains <laughs> i was really invested especially in the murder train thing like that was actually playing out really in a real fun way again cheesy but Look at it. It's a stagey thing. It's very much like a play. And I would actually, this would have worked great as a play. Even, even once the monster shit started, I think it would make a great little, you know, production. Um, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. Train shit's happening. There's a little girl. There's a, a lady who's friends with an actor. You know that old stuff. Train shit. There's... <laughs> Drops of Jupiter, so forth and so on. There's a man here. There's a man there. There's a fella in the hat and fella in the hat various and sundry other folk sure. is, there, is there a man saying tickets please uh tickets, there, please? Is, there is an engineer who goes through and, and 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 does shit and then uh anyway so once they start robbing the train so the train the, the track that it follows um there's a curve in it and if they don't slow down to take this curve the train will overshoot and go into this big lake it'll d hyphen rail it will d hyphen rail i don't i i, <laughs> I assume they did that just to 
be interesting or make it different. There's a lot of movies named Derailed. No, I know. And I would have probably just gone with a different title yeah. instead of doing that weird thing because yeah. it, it makes it seem like there's a reason for that. I don't think there is. I could yeah. I could find no significant D. <laughs> <laughs> just I, average D. I kept looking and looking and looking for any kind of D. <laughs> That would make oh, sense that, for me. That's our Kelly. See, I, oh, I, thought, it would be Kelly. I thought it'd be a better Dwekla. <laughs> maybe for instance. No, 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 I was. But <laughs> there was. Kelly's I'm just got, gonna, I'm Kelly, gonna, he's got to have that D. I, he needs significant <laughs> D. Well, if you're going to tell me that there's going to be D. <laughs> you better deliver the D. I need to have the D delivered. Yeah. Delivered. You think delivered they make a sequel? D hyphen liver. Yeah. The sequel will be double D hyphen rail. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. And it's just a like bunch piranha. of It's just going to be a bunch of uh, uh, Kelly needs it hard and fast. A bunch of surgeons welcome who do breast to, augmentations. Welcome to Titty Train. <laughs> I'm your host, Dr. Boobin Flair. But the irony is there's no actual boobs. <laughs> titty Train. Um, <sighs> it's just they're carrying cases of uh, silicone implants with them. <laughs> yeah. But so I am going to spoil this basically, but it's still, you should go watch it. It's fun. Um, so of course the idiot robbers kill the fucking, uh, train drivers <laughs> and they fucking jump the track. Uh, and they also, the one guy gets shot. Anyway, they go into the water and now this lake has a, it does not have a Twagula, but it does have a Quichua from a Black Lagoon. Ooh. A what? A Quichua from, from a Black Lagoon. Did he store that? <laughs> <laughs> A creature from the Black Lagoon type thing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you guys are so adorable oh when you my do Lord. that. <laughs> we should do that from now on. Just baby talk. Again, um, this movie really could have been interesting without that because so the train is now floating in the water and it's a huge lake. This movie, one thing it suffers from, and this is why, again, I think it, as a stage production would be good, they use a lot of CGI not good CGI to kind of get around large set pieces. Like the lake is clearly CGI uh -huh. uh, at the beginning. This is part of why at the beginning I thought I was going to hate it. When the teenagers are standing next to the outside of the train, the train itself is clearly just a, a picture <laughs> on a green screen and they're standing in front of it. And I was like, Oh, this is going to be garbage. It'd be great if it was like starlight express where it was a bunch of people on roller skates. I would have loved that. Yeah. But, um, but then there were other set like the actual train itself. So they must have known someone that had a train. <laughs> I always feel like these small productions, like that's when, when you see that they have like one really nice set, you're like, somebody knew somebody. I know and, that, and they wrote the, train. the whole movie around that yeah. set. <laughs> they probably, I bet you, it, some of the people who worked on this probably really did perform. Yeah, I know. Or wrote for. A murder mystery train experience. Yeah, because it looked like a great one. Yeah. Like it was really engaging. Question. Yes. Can you privately own a train? In this? Sure. Yeah. You yeah. can privately own one. You don't have to disclose that you own a train. Well, you, you probably mean, have to license it in some way. You, you don't have to. Not in this country. But the track. If it's on, if it's like, on rails. Not in not in Trump's America. How do you? <laughs> the regulation. You, you don't have to make your own track. I'm confused. They own it. I don't know. They own yeah. it. They run it. And everybody yeah. knows it. It's okay. out there. I know anyway. the train. What a big secret to have. Like, I guess, guess Walt what, Disney guys? had a train. Uh, I own a train. <laughs> we bought a train. Uh, so <laughs> to ride around the zoo that we bought also. So they're survivors, and they're they're first of all they th they just think they're floating, and they got to get out of that situation. Then they hear all over the place, <gasps> and it's the uh, it's Quichua from Bogaboom. Oh my God. And he keeps popping up and taking people underwater. Yeah. And like then, dunking them? Yeah, exactly. He's basically dunking them. He's just playing a game of <laughs> He's dunking. bullying them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they realize that there's land pretty close. So they all swim to the Marco. land. And then they, yeah, exactly. And then they find a Marco. house. Yeah. And in the woods, and then the monster comes. How's the creature design? Ah. <sighs> So, okay. The I like Kelly's like, I'm not going to spoil much of this. Uh, the creature design. Well, I start. Well, and then he, 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 uh, the he trailer gave away a lot. That. It didn't give away this much. Well, they, they let you know there was a monster. He amended his spoiling. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. and that there was water. I mean, there's, I'm not giving away too many. And a train. Okay. And like who lives, who dies, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, but the creature design, I think, started off. It, again, it's very creature in Black Loon, except it doesn't really have a fa It's like a blank face or like. Yeah. It doesn't have like eyes and stuff, I don't think. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of hard to see. It's very dark. So it was like humanoid, right? Yes. It had arms, legs. Um, it was not 
bad. It wasn't good either. Um, but the monster, there was actually a couple of really cool moments with the monster. Um, so yeah, ultimately I, I think this is a pretty, f for, for the, the budget that they had, obviously, which is barely anything. Um, <clears throat> I think they did a pretty good job. Like again, finding people who actually were decent actors, um, and taking, you know, a, a complex idea actually for what this was and, um, and making it very, um, you know, fun to watch and easy to stick with. And, and I, I was never bored. Um, so this is another, it's not so bad. It's good. That's not what I'm saying about this movie. It is not like so cheesy. You're going to be laughing. Your, I mean, somebody might, um, but it was just not good, but it was, it was pretty good. All right. It's a very wholesome review. Mm. Yeah. I just well, feel like that, that shows our growth as um, movie watchers and lovers. I enjoyed it. Is is going, okay, I can recognize that there's some shit here. But overall, yeah, I'm proud of what they did. Oh, I just, yeah. I mean, they uh, they surprised me by keeping my attention. Yeah. Um, and Surprise, bitch! <laughs> and I did try to look at it differently. Because if I just gone in like... This is presenting itself this way. I'm going to watch it this way. But um, do you get any resolution to the murder mystery? Oh, you should write the filmmakers. I ask. mean, the resolution is that the robbers killed everyone. I know, but <laughs> that, who was supposed to be the murderer? I know. I really, I really wanted that to just keep going, and it's yeah. a good chunk of the movie. And the robbery is actually very captivating too. Um, the, again, the acting—you're going to be like this guy's over think of it mm -hmm. as you went to the playhouse yeah. in the park okay and they tried to do something ambitious with like a big action horror movie mixed <laughs> up with a murder mystery very playhouse in the park but well they they've I'm done stuff joking. like that you know I'm, I'm being silly um and uh and i think you'll enjoy the acting more i think you'll then be able to see the performances because i do think they were actually very good well if you like this kelly the director has a movie coming out this holiday season called there will always be Christmas. Or a Hallmark or a Lifetime. Yeah, I think it's one of those. Oh, where a that's big city gal has to go back to her small town mm -hmm. to learn how to quit her job and be in love. There's that guy that owns the uh, quirky store. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they were friends in high school, but she was mean to him then. Yeah. But he had a crush on her. Yeah. Now, like, she thinks he's hot, but he's like, you were mean to me. That's Michael Parra in it. Oh, um, you know what? I think we did find some significant D here. Mm -hmm. Delightfulness. It was. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty fun. <laughs> I enjoyed the hell out of it. Now, when you say there was a, a sliver of Hendrickson, like oh, I didn't even touch yeah, on it. Yeah, like, <laughs> there was. Give so, me an idea of how much Hendrickson there was. There was like if you, you know how like you have fractions, mm -hmm. and there's like a quarter and like a sixteenth and a thirty second. There was maybe one. 64th Damn. of Lance Henriksen in this movie. That's they not really, much at all. They trot him out at the end. Like they really do like almost on like a Dr. Lecter dolly kind of thing. Just roll him out. <laughs> yeah. And he looks like he just woke up and they say something to him and he kind of delivers the twist ending. No. The twist is really stupid. Okay. Please don't like you're going to be like, Oh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because the rest of the movie was just, in, you know, you were you were with the story up to that point. Just don't even worry about it. All right. It's actually, it's kind of, it makes it hilarious. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lance dear. Hendrickson, you silly belly. Oh, dear. You craggy old. <laughs> <laughs> craggy old. Fucking, fucking space robot. <laughs> you craggy old space robot, you. <laughs> I bet he gets to call that a lot, and he's so tired of it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Killed the base robot. Oh, my goodness. That's a hashtag on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. He's a national treasure. He is. He is. Let's see who's up for the next uh, Rivia. Yeah. Let's. Let's get the Jack in the Box out and start a cranking. Uh-huh. All right, Andy, you're get up that first. that Jack in the Box. Andy's up first. Oh, Andy. Andy's a cranking. Andy's a cranking. Right, Andy, you're clear. Oh, right, safe. My turn. There by the by the grace of uh, Mother Mary. Mummy's Mother Day. Mary. Crickety, crickety. Oh, it hasn't popped out yet. Oh no, that means uh -huh. Freddy. It hasn't popped out yet. You gotta crank it harder. No significant D. 
<laughs> Give it to me. Freddie, I kind of want to watch this with you. It's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Stars one Mitch Pelleggi. Oh, oh, yeah. No wonder. A teen's discovery of a vintage Polaroid camera develops into a darker tale when she finds that whoever takes their photo with it dies soon afterwards. It's so original. What's it called? I know. Polaroid. Wasn't it's called this, this movie movie? was it? made a bunch of times yeah. already. Is yeah. it sponsored by Polaroid? I um, feel like they were involved. It's actually somehow. called Polaroid? It's called Polaroid. Oh. You I gotta saw shake this. it like a I wasn't this in the theater? I saw this I advertised. Know. It might have been. I don't know. It wasn't here. Not yeah. here. Never here. It's, it, you know, sometimes things get limited releases, but it wasn't in the theaters here. True, true. True that. Sometimes and I live here happens. in Cincinnati, Ohio. We don't often get those limited releases mm-hmm. just in time for Oscar season. Well, I'm going to need to do a limited release like, soon, so we're going to need to move on. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He has to poop. Okay. Yeah. feeling when a guy you like sends you a text at two o'clock on a Tuesday night asking if he can come and find you. And then you open the door to him like you almost forgotten he's coming over. Oh. Hi. Hey. Oh my God, definitely not. That does nothing for you. What? These are my clothes, boo. I've been wearing these all day. It's really not that bad. It's really oh, what are you doing? I don't know you. You got them all. Causing waterfalls. Why did you meet? She used to be our godmother. But then their parents split up. Mum died. You really are very good looking. Thank you. Very. Thank you. Very. <laughs> Thank you. It's been really nice to spend the day with a normal family. The only thing harder than having to tell your super high-powered, perfect, anorexic, rich super sister that you've run out of money is having to ask her to bail you out. I'm just going to ask her. I'm just going to come. Do you need to borrow money? No. You want like other girls. You can keep up. I should ask you if you want to go out for a drink with me. And I'll be sure to treat you like a nasty little bitch. Um, that was a joke. Oh, no, Sorry. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was like, oh, okay. I won't be hurt. So do you. How'd you two meet? Oh, I met her on a bus. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to pick up girls these days. I was like, hi. And she's like, I'll take my number from me. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So Lawrence Pick, flea bag. I love that dude. I think that big the teeth dude, the big teeth. Dude. I think he's the <laughs> nicest person in the whole show. That's not saying much. No. no. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a dark comedy. Yeah. In yeah. a lot of ways. It's the big Emmy darling. Um, Phoebe Waller bridge, of course, being like the hot shit out there. She writes killing Eve too. Oh, does she really? She created killing oh, Eve. Yeah. And she's I've never the, seen that. She's writing the new bond. I think too. It's all right. For realties? Yeah, I think so. She's uh, she's got an edge like in her. I haven't seen Killing Eve. Has anybody seen it yet? But it's supposed to be a really great thriller, kind of funny thriller series. Um, and I think my understanding is this was something that they just kind of were doing like as a one woman show at one point, kind of just as a fun offshoot thing that they turned into the series. But you know what it really reminded me of watching this? Meet the Parents. Do you remember that? All the cringing? Yeah, Just the, all the like, the why cringe, are... awkwardness, why are you behaving this way? Why are way? people being like this? Yeah. Um, so it was un- uncomfortable. <laughs> it was. It. I, I, I'm conflicted about this because yeah. I did... I think it's a great show. Um, I think they did... Uh, I think she did what she wanted to by making these despicable people <laughs> feel real. Like, everyone is complicated. Yeah. Um and uh so that's great the acting is great the writing is great everything is great my biggest problem is i didn't ever like her well enough for me to get that oh but she's charm like i feel like there was this um 
I feel like it was one of these, this is a charming scoundrel. I don't think she was charming enough. Well, also, I think part of it is the way she wrote this was, the key, you'll notice like all the main, the most difficult and, and screwed up people in this story don't have names. Yeah. She's just flea bag. Yeah, exactly. Her dad's just dad. Yeah. Her, they call him godmother, but step Sophie. I, is that like a, an English thing she for stepmother? They call him God. No. Well, well no, no, I think she is officially like the she godmother. She was their godmother. I think she, she was, was her a godmother friend of the family. And then she married the husband yeah. after the mom died. Okay. Yeah. But she's just called godmother. I don't think they no. ever do say her name. Do Sophie. They? No, Sophie's her name on peep show. Oh yeah. Did she have a name? No, she was just godmother. And dad's just dad. Olivia Coleman, who's also another critical darling right now. So she's show, fantastic. No, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Broadchurch, I, I know her mostly from, but um, yeah. Hot Fuzz as well. Yeah, she's done all kinds of her stuff. Her Fuzz is super hot. Huh? It uh, is. Uh, yeah, I think you, you touched on something when you were describing this, like the acting's fantastic. The writing's fantastic. I just didn't enjoy myself as much as I thought I would. Yeah. Because everybody's so awful and now to each other themselves agreed and and it that's no one wants to talk to anyone about anything real now the interesting thing i will say about the fleabag character is when you think she is completely awful and she is but she is still complicated like there are moments where she almost goes against her own quote unquote rules like yeah. when uh like she's awful to her boyfriend <laughs> What's his nuts? Uh, I can't. Harry. Remember. Harry. Yes. But does she even have rules? I think that's part of her character that she just was well, like a fly by night type of thing. When I say rules, I mean like, um, like when she scares him and he's like crying his eyes out in the shower. <laughs> she she seems to actually feel real bad about it, and she. Yeah. It, I feel like in lesser in, in the hands of a lesser writer who who didn't understand and a lesser actor who didn't understand nuance, that character would have just been like, "This guy's a pussy. I can't be with this." But like she genuinely cared like there for what her emotions are she genuinely cares for that person you know what i mean there, she yeah. does yeah there are things that come out so that's that's why i'm conflicted because the performance is like the, it's so nuanced that it might be a little too real like it's like she's not likable maybe you know like but that's entirely intended mm -hmm. um well, she's also doesn't like herself. Ex well, exactly. No, it's, in that's the thing. I, I think everything they did, they did very successfully. Yeah. And I think they very successfully made it hard for me to root at all for anyone. Had, like, had you watched the series love? I watched the first episode and while I love everyone in that, I did not care for the show. That is a very similar yeah. series to this and also Brett Gelman's in both of them, which is kind of funny. Yeah. But, um, I feel like she's a lot, she's more likable in love than, this one you mean gillian jacobs yeah. character well you, you when you get to season two of this that is when the priest character turns up mm -hmm. and the show that's they save a lot they take i think it took guts to save so much development for season two because i think they but will alienate a lot of it's, people it's very risky because like I'm not sure I necessarily want to watch season yeah. two. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying that that that's the risk. You Why take. do I want to put myself through this? Yeah, this yeah they longer. don't they don't give you any of that in season one but season two is where that part of what you're okay. used to seeing with this kind of story arc begins to happen where they're like oh we're gonna let this character grow somewhat in the first season there's really no growth no i i need some inkling that she's gonna change and there are little bits of it but it's like yeah. kelly says not enough for me to actually root for her i like that it doesn't make any promises the it's dad different. got a little sweeter near the end of the first season where he he's so just mean yeah very cold he's cold. very cold is this a british thing i don't know i don't know but i think it's more than that but I, he kind of opened up a little and she does like again she has these moments where i she's unlikable but she's not a monster but there but, are moments oh, sir yeah she's yeah. not a monster by any means but there are moments even where i'm like i get who you are like when she's talking to the guy who turned her down for the loan and like he tells her the story of how he was ended up in that class the sluts yeah. class <laughs> <laughs> um and she kind of has this moment with it like because she's a mess and she yeah. understands a mess you know and it's she does have these moments where she's like i get it i don't hate you know it's yeah she's not a completely she just lets sort of her worst impulses usually right 
take control. I in real life, I actually usually like people who are like her. Yeah. Like even though, yeah, she's deeply a flawed person, but there's kind of like this um it is a case of I just didn't I couldn't play by society's regular rules. It's that old thing, but it's it plays more true. Yeah. Where we're used to being shown somebody who finds a way to fit in by the end. Yeah. And that's what we're expecting and that makes us feel better. Well, he, we might feel that way ourselves where this you know, she's always going to be a little screwed up. And the thing is I don't even mind that. I don't necessarily need a character to be likable. I think but for me to, it's it's real hard for me to, to describe the feeling I get about this. So yeah. I, I was thinking about this because, you know, the the male anti-hero character is such a well-trod and well-loved kind of genre. Right. Um, and before anybody wants to start screaming, oh, when a woman's unlikable. But I, I, I don't think, I think when you think of somebody like Tony Soprano or I can't think of anybody else right now. Um there's still some more reality in the way people interact. And I just don't, in this, I think it was very, very um, um, blown out of proportion to how people normally interact mm -hmm. with each other. I would never, I, I, if you think this is how, can you think of like a true scene? messed up people would really act towards one each other, each other. I just, I don't think like so. Like is there a particular scene you can think of that? Well, I, I think that, that at the end when she's being the waitress at the, um, exhibit exhibition yeah and she has her outbursts yeah. where she uh, drops the uh, champagne glasses yeah i think that's not that for me that'd be an example of what amy's talking about well the 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 the, the stepmother is very much of a caricature i don't think anybody would behave well, I like don't that know. I nobody would call she, her out on it i thought she was pretty in I, reality i actually loved her relation i love fleabag's relationship with her sister and with, that felt good and normal and even with her stepmother i i did feel like there was this real truth there in how to each other's faces at least in the beginning it you know it was kind of like this fake like oh how are you doing oh i'm good oh you you don't look too well yeah, you know yeah. everybody has relationships like that. it felt really that felt really i mean it did feel like a show but it also like the 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 feeling under it felt real mm -hmm. to me um but i i get what you're saying i all the social sort of all um, the men she interacts with and the, and the way they act are just not that was very much characters i think of i just don't think i i don't know i guess what i'm trying to say is it didn't feel as grounded in reality as something like um like a, a, a female anti-hero thinking of well the, this reminded me of sex in the city a little bit um and at least a little bit. Yeah, I had the same. Yeah, thought. that that felt more grounded in reality than really. I don't this. think that that sex in the city feels realer than this. But no, um, I, I, I feel like I know. I feel like I known people like her. I don't feel like I've ever known anyone like them. But I kept comparing and it, this is a much gentler, much sillier version. But she reminded me a little bit of Kristen Wiig's character in Bridesmaids. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. Not being able to quite be what, like feeling ultimately like she's letting herself down but she's more vulnerable yeah kristen wick's character yes. in bridesmaids well, and is is able to open up to somebody that's good and kind and then in this this first season obviously yeah. i don't know what There's happens in the second this great uh when she's talking to her dad in the very first episode and she says oh fuck it i have a horrible feeling that i'm a greedy perverted selfish apathetic cynical depraved morally bankrupt woman who can't even call herself a feminist yeah. I think like that's like the whole point of the series yeah. like, in that piece of dialogue with her dad where she's just like, this is who I, 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 that's it. I've, I tried and I'm done. Yeah. Like and I had my friend I, I had my friend boo and she and, died and they were not, that was a good wholesome relationship. And then she fucked that up. Yeah. I get what broken people are and they make bad decisions and clearly you didn't have the best childhood and your mom died and there's a lot going on there. I, I never got the feeling that they had a bad childhood or anything like that. Well, the Brits, they don't talk about their feelings mm -hmm. a lot. I don't know. I don't, like my, I think maybe the issue I have with this, it hit too close to home. 
Yeah, I, um, I, yeah. I was, it was a really re- very relatable because I can only imagine if they made a show about me how unlikable <laughs> I would be. <laughs> Everybody's unlikable. I just think, but, well, and like it's like uh, in, you kind of ways. she's kind of like her own worst enemy. Yeah, you're There's more vulnerable ways. than she mm-hmm. is. She's not vulnerable in any way. Well, when you she get to the interact the last, with people in real ways. There's the last episode. I, she says, like I think it's a good like bookend for the quote from the first one where she says, you know, either everyone feels like this a little bit, or they're just not talking about it, or I'm completely fucking alone, which really isn't fucking funny. Yeah, that's a very profound statement. And I do think she has it's the m- first one she has moments where she wants to be vulnerable. Like you can see it almost happen. And then like, she lets her, you know, the persona that she maintains get in the way of it. Um, again, when she's talking to that guy, you know, when she's <laughs> on that hilarious retreat, um, <laughs> and I feel like, again, there's like this, like that guy there's, she almost connects with him more on a real level than almost anybody yeah. else. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I just, I, I really like that. I felt like that scene actually brought her to a place where I actually could, I, that, that actually brought me around a little bit on her. Um, and, uh, I think because she's not a caricature, I think is what has made it was what initially made it hard for me to wrap my head around her because she did feel so real and feel like someone, people I have known, um, I was like, yeah, it, she feels so real life that they're not really fun in real life. Um, but yeah. then as, as, as the series wore on, I did get to see those glimpses that, that sort of started to bring me around on her. So it'll, it's hard to say uh, whether I'll hit up season two or not. But um, I, it definitely, again, it, it kept me engaged. The, everything about it was really good. Really good. It's interesting, all the men in this show, thinking about that guy, the lone officer guy that comes back around, and then he comes back around in the end in kind of a sweet moment. Yeah. Um, how all the men in this show are portrayed as just, I don't know what the word I want, just assholes, <laughs> except for that guy. Well, no, the dad says in the last episode, he has a, he has a sweet moment. There's a great moment where he goes, you always hear about daughters saying their father has screwed them up, but you don't hear the reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Like about what the daughters, how much Mm -hmm. the daughters damaged the dad. Well, I actually love, she does write to sort of the sort of sexual politics. She gives everybody a lot of ground and, and keeps the ground pretty even again, when she's having the guy explain about his sexual harassment and how, he feels he wants to move past it. You know, it's this sort of, sort of thing you don't hear a lot. And, um, and I think the met like her, I think her boyfriend, Harry, I don't know that he was an ad, he was weird for sure. And he had some weird control. Like, you know, he didn't want him to masturbate, <laughs> but I think that was I, the way I perceived that too, was just after having been with her this long, like he, she kind of maybe screwed him up a little bit. And um, he didn't seem like an asshole, just a real emotionally, like, just all over the place dude. Was she ever really herself with him? Or was she always what she thought she was supposed to be? I just don't understand. Well, I I think... For a show that's supposed to be funny, I'm just Mm -hmm. sitting here going, (sighs) you know, just like, I feel bad. Well, for me, like, she... For me, this show, she was unlikable because she was the only one that was expressing her feelings. But she really wasn't. I know, but in a way, like, she, everybody is kind of putting on airs and putting on this act that everything's okay. And she's the only one that's trying to get people to open up and in what be way? vulnerable. When? Like, what did well, she, she wants everybody to be honest yes, that's, about who they are. She's the only one that's like, yeah. kind of honest about certain things. And that's kind of intimidating for some people. Like, like she's trying to get her her sister to, like, open up about her relationship with her yeah. husband and uh but do you get her- the feeling like this is the first time like her and her sister don't talk about real shit until like this moment i feel like they have this thing where they can't let themselves do it again i think they both want to and then all of her relationships i think that she just thinks i'm a piece of shit and that's easy to be a piece of shit but all these people expect me to not be a piece of shit. So I'm going to try not to be a piece of shit, but I can't help well, but be it, a piece of like, shit. I, it's like, I think everybody's a piece of shit, but nobody wants to make the, admit they're the piece of shit. Yeah. And she, she keeps saying pieces of shit. I'm a <laughs> shit. Uh, so I, I do think, I, I think that this is a, a, a snapshot of their relationship all the way, probably through their lives where they, 
they really love each other and want to connect, but they're such different people and they're both so inside their own heads that they just end up sort of bouncing mm -hmm. off of each other. And I feel like she's the sister who was like always the one who had to take care of everything. And oh, yeah. She that's had to be a responsible she, one. And that's yeah. why she's kind of very yeah. uptight about yeah. her feelings and what she really wants. I just don't want the world of this show for anybody to look at it and go, yeah, everybody's kind of like that. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't. You might recognize that, but recognize that that's that's a bad thing. Yeah, I will say this back to your point about Sex in the City. I do think that these people are less awful. I hated these people far less than I hated those characters. Every character you on Sex and you City. hate everybody on Sex and City more than you hate the people in this show. I do. Wow, we need to discuss. I very much do. Those people are the most entitled pieces of fucking ass. <laughs> you don't think there was a little bit of an entitled ass in here? I, I do, but I think it was on a much more ground level. You're thinking economically entitled, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm a piece of shit human being, but I still have a cafe, my own business. That's failing. And That's no, yeah. not making still any there's any privilege to pig. have it. <laughs> <laughs> privilege to have it. You know, well, everybody has a certain level of privilege. But yeah, I, I encourage you to check out season two. Yeah, and um, I really have to poop. Okay, <laughs> not to break the fourth wall or oh anything. My but well, thank you, Lauren. Oh. I wonder if this is what you wanted out of this, or for us to discuss the more hilarious bits because there was great. It was fucking oh, hilarious. One of my yeah. favorite. I'm going to keep this fast. One of my favorite lines in the whole thing, and this is what I actually love about this character because she never goes the the, the way you think. Like when she says, "The next man that rides through walks through this door when he's <laughs> yeah. ridden to death," and her father walks through, and instead of being like, she's just like, "Not ideal." <laughs> <laughs> like she's so like her sense of humor. Is so that even then she's gonna like play it you know she's not gonna go the easy joke you know the guy she's having sex with that's real into her tiny tits <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so small <laughs> um, so tiny so I, lauren i actually really enjoyed this um and it it made me think about the, the characters they i there's so many layers it's like a good soup just depths of flavor mm. don't watch the show go oh okay so it's okay to be like that no Open yourself up, be more vulnerable, be more kind. This is not a kind, vulnerable person. But it's okay if you are like that. As long as you're trying to not be like that. Right, and then watch season two. Okay. Her tits weren't even that small. Or do we want? Yeah, I didn't think they were that small. Oh. So, um, I think she's got a problem with her boobies. We'll be back next week. Phoebe, with, you have great boobies. With feedback. Yeah. Uh, and news and mm -hmm. all that fun shit. All the stuff you want. And it's been a while because we did the... Uh, <laughs> It's been a while. It's been a while because what's funny is that's not even our thing. No, it's <laughs> comedy bang bang. Well, it's really stained if we're gonna. See we're them. really gonna. Yeah. See Freddie's shorts are about to be stained. Oh, Speaking of stained. All right. Touching cloth. Uh, the. <laughs> We'll be back oh. with all that stuff. And it's been a while because we did staff picks, which takes a little extra time from a normal theme yeah. no. plus the week off. Yeah. Um, but we want to thank our Beelzebub patrons. These are the ones who really, really, really make it possible. All, the every, rest of you are shit. But yeah. these people. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of these shit. These are the pro producer fellows. Every little bit. The rest bit, of your flea bags. <laughs> every little bit does help. We're, we have 93 patrons. Our goal right now is to try to get to 100. So if you are considering it, even if you just want to sign up at the the. Biel the uh, Sorry, the lowest level, which is Mammon, I want to say. Mammon. Uh, that you get a, you know, collectible pen that we make every year. Get a Mammon's mammon little gram. baby love short. I'm short. And mammon little, <laughs> mammon's little baby love short. Ooh, that's a problematic song. But I said Mammon. <laughs> and you get all the Origins episodes, which are our original uh, episodes from year one on with commentary. Uh, Night of the Comic and every, anything else we can come up and with. And God knows whatever else yeah, we'll do. Yeah, who knows? Like today, I put a lens out there, which is like a video of um, Guapo, Andy's dog, sitting in one of the studio chairs wearing yeah. headphones. Where uh, is he? He's around here. He's sleeping over there. So these are our Beelzebubs, our producers, Ernie Perez. Hi, Ernie. Elise Wallace. Hi, Elise. Tom Brink. You're not a flea bag. Hyphen. No, she's not. I'm just, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw a flea bag out there. She's a flea beautifully woven basket mm -hmm. amanda g hey hey girl jeremy burmeister and cassie fuck your shirt <laughs> <laughs> you'll get it but you'd be covered in fleas though yeah yeah it's be real flea bag. mark watts hey blake heath hey bill farner yo hey. tree and alex mcnulty i ain't a good one hey girl. jeff lancaster that's my boy brandon and emily Dim some babies sweet sweet Brandon and Emily. In our newest Beelzebub, Todd DePompa. Todd DePompa! De 
pompous circumstances. Hi, Chad. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you. Freddy's got a poop. Thank Sorry you. I'm going to rush because, you know, poop and stuff. Bye. 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 high five for breakfast. If he should go to 